what are some of the current challenges to you guys building these spaces and 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 are you getting around those or how are, how are of course i don't want to we're not going to reference any addresses or anything but just like what are what are some of the challenges there that someone else might have to face or that you guys are facing parking is always an issue um for us we've seen some larger cities um you know make a lot of movement there we haven't seen that a lot in florida um and so that tends to be one of our limiting factors so we have to be really careful about that because yeah, we always want to be good stewards for the community. And one of the things the neighbors care a lot about is, are there a bunch of cars there because it looks weird and goofy? And so we promote very much like, you know, car-free living as much as possible um, and are very deliberate about how we, we manage that. Um, that is one of the areas. I mean, I think you know, the enforcement of a lot of these provisions that we find on a municipal basis with regards to unrelated people living together, I find it very difficult to enforce in most areas. There's not a mechanism where a, a government official can say, show me who is on this lease. Show me who lives in this property. That's not a question that like you have to answer. Um, and so it starts rubbing up against civil rights and privacy laws. Um, and we tend to like use that as one of our primary defenses is that you can't tell us who lives in a particular property because if it's a very large family, um, how are we defining family? Because in today's world, a lot of our families are p people that we opt into, right? Yeah. And we chosen, do have chosen family. Yeah, exactly, a chosen family. And where is that line? You know, do we have to share blood or DNA? Because there's a lot of nuclear families that are not that way, um, especially in the gay community. You have families, and they may not be, you know, blood related, but they're certainly living together. And you know, do we have a right to say something about that? So we tend to be a refuge for niche your demographics that historically have been oppressed. And so I think it would be very politically unsavory to come out and saying these people are not allowed to live affordably. And if they were to get kicked out of an affordable place, some of them would actually become homeless. I mean, we've had, you know, kids that graduate from foster care. And this is the only way that they could have a roof over their head. In fact, there's one example right now where literally tonight, I'm going to help him move a truck to a vacant lot so he can live in his truck because it's legal to do that. But it's illegal for him to put a house you know, on, on, uh, over his head in the way that he can afford. Um, and I love examples of that because it truly is, you know, as soon as you make housing illegal, you're, you're going to have issues of affordability. And so all the policies that we've done, we know the effects of them, you know, that we get what we've gotten. And so it's time to do something radically different. And so we're very much, you know, trying to promote that lobby anytime we can, that this is a safe, conservative way to improve a community and keep things affordable. So it's a gentrification without the cost increases in rent. It's kind of the, both, the best of both worlds if it's done properly. 